was driving Mr. Sack on this great big packet, you know, this telephone in there. And he said, stop, stop, Ray, right in the middle of Valkyrie Street, stop. And there was some construction men working there and digging a whole trench or whatever they were doing. And stopped and I, he said, let me out. So I opened his back door, he walked out, and he started talking to the laborers. For God's sake, this great big man in Honolulu is talking to the laborers in a hole, digging, digging ditches or whatever they're doing. And that's the kind of man Earl Sacker was. He was one of the few, maybe the only man that I can recall that would do these things. He was a regular guy. He loved the regular people. He loved the laborers. He loved the businessmen. He loved everybody. Treat them all alike and help them a lot. I was just amazed when he had me do that. And I talked about it for a whole year because you no, know, everybody I spoke with about uh, about this incident, it just simply couldn't believe that Mr. Sacker would be, be talking to labor, you know, in a hole. But anyway, that goes to show what type of man he was. Just a great man. That was all part of Earl Sacker's ranch. He moved up there, had a little, we call a Sacker shack. In God, we had everything in there. And it was just absolutely gorgeous ranch house. And that's where he entertained people internationally, all over the world at the ranch. Horseback riding, right hell, we had 40 horses. The only Tennessee walking horses in Hawaii. I brought in the finest quarter horse Hawaii has ever had. Stallion, Jack Calabo, registered name and made purchases of six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars and back in those years that was a hell of a lot of money. But anyway, these were the famous horses we had and I used to I used to uh, exhibit them down at the old Kapilani Park when we used to play polo back in the early years before Tuna Senpai who became very famous as a polo player. Uh, uh, oh God, how can I explain that man? Uh, he was a, a genius. I mean his mind worked so fast that you gotta be a, along with his mind, or I hated his mind because I know it was the head because I knew what he was thinking. Dum, 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 I am sitting here dum, wanting dum, memories dum, to dum, teach dum, me dum, to dum, see dum, the beauty dum, in the world through my own eyes. Dum, I am sitting here wanting dum, memories dum, to dum, teach dum, me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. You used to rock me in the cradle of your arms. You said you'd hold me till the pains of life were gone. You said you'd comfort me in times like these, and now I need you, now I need you. Memories to teach me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. Since you've gone and left me, there's been so little beauty, but I know I saw it clearly through your eyes. Now the world outside is such a cold and bitter place. Here inside I have few things that will console And when I try to hear your voice above Girl, I think today she's a grandma. She was a gorgeous, yeah, but she was kind of a bratty damn thing. <laughs> and she played with little bunnies and ran, and she wanted this bunny. She run over the bunny, tell her mother, "Mommy, I'm gonna take this bunny." home. mother said, "Absolutely not! You can't take that to Washington Place. Absolutely not!" She would scream and yell, "You wait till your daddy comes back." And my son's taking the governor 
little Quinn out in the Kohi Lippi Lippi for a hunchback where we have trails all throughout the uh, 500 acres of bar path. But anyway, uh, then she found another rabbit. Lord knows that scream she wants that one too. She wants it too. And uh, so uh, they were pretty black and white and brown and white. I don't know what the hell I forget. So anyway, you, you ask your daddy when he comes back. You are determined to have this rabbit, this great big steak limousine. Blackboard. She was trying to hide him in the limousine. I would get it out of there. And finally, the daddy came. She started screaming down. She wanted to drive. The, the governor said, absolutely not, Mary. Cut you running. You cannot take this drive back. Away. You absolutely. She screamed louder. She screamed until she won the battle. <laughs> the little damn brat <laughs> won the battle. Now she didn't want one. She won two. And lo and behold, they happen to be a male and female. Now, you know how rabbits multiply. Yes. Oh, yes. Lord. So, the governor gave in. She won the battle off the rabbits went on a limousine. State limousine. Oh. That's history. Oh, <laughs> Down the white place, that gardener had to make coop, rabbit coops and etc. And then, people, you know, Mary Kalani, well, of course, she wanted now and, and, and the next day, well, it was all over. She didn't want to give him water. She didn't want to feed him. Now, well, they got loose. Oh, okay. Rabbits were hopping all the washing plates. Well, what happened, you know what rabbits do? They make these tunnels on the ground. And, and where the where water plate is full of that uh, cinder, cinder gravel, right? you know, that whole Makiti cinder, made out of cinders from the volcanic cinders. Anyway, they had tunnels under the White House and all over Washington Place. They were multiplying by the hundreds. Every time you drive more the things, there'll be a rabbit popping out of the oh, tunnel. Okay. Now, another rabbit popping up over there. Another on the front lawn. Lord behold, watch your face full of rabbit. Oh, and a damn Ray Andrade. We are that damn. They blame me. Not America. They blame me. Earl Tide said, You get your cup pink get right here on the road right now. I got planes only fly one today. I can't fly out of here. I'm sending a Navy helicopter. He oh, sent a goddamn Navy helicopter oh, right on the ranch land. Pick me up, flew him back. You get to one big, you get to the other. Governor will not have it. Well, so, I had to get rid of rabbits. <laughs> then, anyway, in any event, all the governors at this cocktail party, they all told the story while living at Washington Place. That was great. All the governors stood up, they all oh, there was class, they applauded. When Nancy Quinn got to stand up, and my dear friend from Puno Hose Coot, she talked to there for many years, she was a drinking part of my home on one side on the beach. I used to have them over there, and we'd have a little cocktail or two, and maybe three, two, and maybe more than that. But anyway, <laughs> all these nice prominent school teachers there, Puno. And so, uh, she was invited there, and she heard Nancy Quinn stood up and said, well, I tell you what, I have a story for us in place, all right? But it's the story of the rabbit. God, everybody looked at her. They started chuckling and laughing. Just, what is this from his wife, from his rabbit? They couldn't figure it out. Well, she said, yes, it's the rabbit story. When she told him that story I'm telling you right now, so help me, God. She had a standing ovation. That was... <laughs> Bill Craig blamed me, Nancy blamed everybody blamed the Rams right had to come back on a, on a helicopter and get rid of the goddamn <laughs> Well, that was the rest. If you look at a standing ovation, wow. that was the finest story that White House had ever, Washington ever had in history. Mm -hmm. And when my lady friend heard it, grabbed it. Uh-oh, Bill Craig and Nancy Craig up on the ranch. Uh-oh, Rams right came to her mind, sure enough. <laughs> they blamed all of me. That can't be <laughs> She knew that was my. <laughs> she knew it all. Well, of course, that didn't mention me. But she well knew it. Too. That grand better was the son of a gun. But anyway, I used to do the dandy. <laughs>